welcome, Rachel. Uh, do I pronounce your name correctly? That's correct. Thank you, Manu. Manu, yes. excuse me. <laughs> all good, all good. Thank you for joining us. Uh, could you give us a, a quick introduction about uh, why you are here today, what you do, and also something about your work? So I don't need to introduce that. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Um, so uh, my current role, I have a few hats that I wear um, and they center around education. I am the director of programs at Professors Without Borders, which is an organization that seeks to connect uh, educators and students worldwide to um, bridge the global divide in, in education. Um, I'm also a trustee uh, on the board, which is a great honor. Um, in addition to that, uh, I have my own uh, NGO. It's a youth-focused environmental NGO with a strong um, emphasis on education. And I come to all of this from a very strange route. Um, I started in education. I moved into the business sector um, where I was, where I worked for 13 years. But uh, my heart always called me back and I'm, I'm very glad to be uh, back in, in the classroom or um, beside the, you know, connected to the classroom again. That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, because you work for uh, Professors Without Borders, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that is um, one of the main things I would like to talk with you about today. What is the, the focus and, and how does your day to day look like? Wow. Okay. So as an organization, um, our vision is to build a global community of, of passionate educators who are dedicated to ensuring relevant, engaging and, and holistic higher education experiences worldwide. Um, and, and thus equipping students around the world with the skills necessary to be inspiring leaders and to have meaningful impact in their communities. Um, the, the huge privilege I have uh, as director of programs is that I get to help shape a lot of the direction along with my fantastic colleagues um, on, on, on the work that we do. And my typical day <laughs> is, um, it, it is atypical. Uh, one day I could be um, working with a colleague to prepare a grant proposal. Another day I could be um, uh, working with um, one of my interns to uh, write a project proposal, um, uh, talking to other educators, um, investigating opportunities for collaboration with other organizations. It's extremely varied and it is wildly exciting, to be honest. Okay, that's nice. I, I was planning to play a little bit advocate of the devil here okay. uh, <laughs> there is of course like uh, on me, most place, places worldwide there, there is education right um, yes. what makes it so important that uh, you and your team are there uh, in the education sector that's a that's a that's a very fair question actually um, so you're right um, you know most most of the places um, they have, most countries have their own education system. And um, despite misconceptions in the global north, um, most of these are very, very strong systems. They're, and they're great at, um, you know, they provide a strong subject matter or subject content uh, knowledge. Um, where we come in is twofold. First of all, um, in the Global North, we're only starting you know, recently to explicitly teach what the OECD or the Organiz Organization of Economic uh, Cooperation and Development has identified as the core 21st century skills. So there's more, there, there are more meta skills. Um, and these are very transferable across, across life, across career paths, everything. So things like, uh, excuse me, critical thinking, problem solving, communication skills, uh, leadership, teamwork, those, those kind of what we used to call soft skills, which are actually you know, at the core of, of everything you need and do. Um, so we, uh, so all of our courses are, are skills-based. 
um, we're not we're not trying to uh, come in and and necessarily teach content matter. Um, as I said, that already exists in in, the, in these places. So we're supplementing, and we are helping students um, build and refine the tools that they need to use this subject matter that they've gained, whether it's they're studying medicine or they're studying engineering or they're studying uh, rural development, whatever it is, so that they can um, succeed in their careers, that they can be community leaders. Um, the, second, the second aspect of that, uh, if I can remember, uh, my goodness, I've, I've diverged so, so deeply that I, I, uh, I've lost my train of thought. You were asking me um, about why it's what yeah, we why offer. it's important. Yes, no, more yes. why it's important that you are here. Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. The other reason is that um, you know there are so many countries around the world where, if your family has access to to funds, you know you, you're the aspiration is that you will go study in in the UK, in Europe, in uh, North America, and and quite often what happens is that. Uh, it's a brain drain, you know, um, the, the, the talent and the, the knowledge and skills is not returning to the home community always. Mm. And so by bringing, uh, by bringing these things in, we're building capacity locally um, and also uh, giving access to, 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 to some of these things that, that they wouldn't otherwise have. Um, and it's very much informed by the local context, what, what our host institutions uh, feel that their students need, what our host institutions uh, identify as being relevant for the local context. So it's very, very, uh, very user driven. Okay. And, and what, what is the age group you're focused on? Or is so we it primarily, age? not all ages, no, we primarily focus on tertiary level education. So you're looking at, uh, you're looking at higher education, you're looking at sort of 18 plus Okay, that's awesome. Thank you for the uh, for the explanation for that. You also mentioned earlier, and, and before we continue uh, on this topic, I, I found something interesting, and that's that you mentioned that you have a big business history, and then yeah. uh, or you had experience within education, then you went fully for business, and then you missed education a lot, and then you went yeah. back. Could you tell us something about that process and 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 um, what made, you, what made you first go to business, I guess, and then what triggered you to come back to education? Uh, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people would love to hear that story as well. Sure. Um, I, I got into education while I was living in Asia, um, and, and I really enjoyed it. But um, the, then I moved into uh, another role, and it was project-based, and the project, we completed the project. And so I moved back, um, I, in fact, I, I moved to London, England. And uh, there was, I simply had a feeling that I was in London and you know, now it was a time, I was quite young at the time. And I thought right now is the time I have to start being a, an adult and building a career and being successful. And I kind of fell victim to this mindset that, that success equals business. Um, and uh, so I was very, I was trying very hard to, to build a, uh, um, what, what, uh, build a, a successful career in, 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 in what was defined by society as success. Um, having said that, it's in, in no way negative. I, I gained such valuable experience um, that I can bring to, to, to learning and to classrooms and, and to students. Of, of how, you know, um, how things work in the, the nonprofit sector, how things work in the financial sector, because I was in, an, in, in a top investment bank for, for, for many years. Um, so there's a lot of real life practical uh, knowledge and experience, excuse me, that, 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 I, can, that I can use to inform, uh, to inform my teaching. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And and is it that you, when you were working in business, that you felt like, okay, I really missed something essential in my life, 
and that that triggered you to come back or was there any specific reason that you get a, a good nice offer from the education field or was it was it really something from the inside it was it was very much from the inside and it was very much it came the the, the catalyst was 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 a very bizarre uh, experience you know over those years that i was i was working in the business sector i I, there was a, a voice inside me that said, you know, well, why don't you go back and teach? Why don't you go back and teach? And, and, and I thought, no, that's just me, you know, dreaming about maybe going abroad somewhere or, you know, something to, to feed the travel, the wanderlust. Um, but it was persistent. And the catalyst was um, one, uh, one Christmas I was, while I was, Living in London, I had gone to the United States to visit a family member uh, for the holidays. And when I came back, my uh, my apartment had been burgled. Um, and it, if anyone has had that experience, you you know that you, one of the one of the main reactions is that you want out. You don't want to be in that place anymore. And so instantly, I was I, I was moving after after six and a half years I was I was shifting everything to, to move to another location and I think that prompted the whole reevaluation uh, of of what I was doing and, and it, it was just a bit of a snowball effect in terms of you know okay well I'm already in the middle of this big upheaval what else can I do with that and I and, and I started to listen to that inner voice and I made my plan and it took it took two years because I you know I needed mm. to to regulate everything, but at uh, at, the, at that point, I was ready to just jump off into the unknown because that's exactly what I did. And and, and did you already had like a new thing, or you just stopped business completely and then you started searching for your next direction, or was it was that a one way go? Um, well, I had so in the in the last six months, I, I had ideas about what I was going to do, but it was the last six months as the as the cutoff time approached that I really started to think because you know you, you can plan two years in advance, but you're not going to set up something and they're going to wait two years for you. Um, so in the last six months, I really started investigating my options, um, and I, um, I I again just by chance um, I, I was looking into I, I was trying to pursue one path um, with uh, excuse me with an organization in Togo um, and it led me just slightly uh, in another direction to work with um, an organization a very small organization in Ivory Coast and so um, uh, it, it was, I was preparing, uh, I was opening a center for traffic children and, uh, and traffic children and street children. Um, and so that's what really, really just sort of opened the floodgates because I knew I wanted to do something that was more meaningful to me in my life. Um, and then being there, doing that opened up the doors where I could see avenues uh, of possibility in, in education itself. Awesome. That's a, that's a nice story. What, 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 uh, what makes you want to teach so badly? What do you like about it? What, what is, the, what is the, the number one thing you really like about teaching? Oh my gosh. The number one thing is when I see students of any age that I work with, when, I've, when I see them faced with challenges, and they overcome those challenges and they have such excitement and such pride. And, you know, it can be expressed differently. It can be expressed with a, just, a, you know, like a, a, a quiet smile or students that go, yes. Um, but that, 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 that feeling that, um, of seeing them uh, achieve something that, that didn't just, you know, fall into their laps. Um, uh, and, and I don't, one of the things that's very important is I, I, I don't teach. I don't say here is the material here is your information it's about guiding them through a process of, of discovery and 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 learning and developing that this understanding on their own so it's really it's really about being i mean it's a I, in a in a sense i'm like a tour guide or a cruise director like we're, we're walking along this path and, and and i'm helping them 
uh, sort of navigate it, but it's their journey. And to, 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 be, to be a part of that journey is, is, is an incredible, an incredible uh, honor. Um, I, I'll give you an example. Um, I've taught, um, I, I've taught a couple of pre-sessional immersion programs at the African Leadership University. Um, uh, in fact, one of them was the inaugural program when the Rwanda uh, branch opened. And just last Saturday, uh, I watched online as one of my students graduated. Uh, a young man who's had huge challenges in his life um, uh, and had to fight against a lot of odds, but uh, extremely determined, extremely, um, extremely driven. And to know that you know, he started his journey uh, with me and, and that he was able to use a lot of the, 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 the tools that we developed during those three months um, throughout his university career and, and, and to watch, him, watch the culmination of that. I cried tears of joy. <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine, yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and because is it then that the program you did with him in this case? <laughs> Right, mm -hmm. is him. Uh, is that was that like a big support for him to get through university and get his degree? Is, is yes, that yes, how indeed. I should say? It? Okay. Exactly. So it's so um, the the foundational purpose. Well, had, it, had, it was twofold. There was it was English um, English for academic purposes uh, because we the a ALU African Leadership University conducts all of its learning in, in English. Um, uh, not, uh, not because it's considered a superior language, but because it, it, honestly, it's, 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 a, it's a lingua, it's, it's a lingua franca, it's a common, it, it's the most widely spoken uh, English, uh, excuse me, language in the world. Um, and it also, you know, it, it also helps prepare students for, for, for future careers. So, so, there was, you know, there, there was the, the portion of it that, that was strictly about learning how to speak English and write in English. Um, but it's done through a very interesting lens. Um, and, and we use it also to, to prepare students for university because we have students coming from very different backgrounds. Some students from very rural areas, some students from systems that, that uh, approach things differently. So it's a kind of unifying experience. Um, and so, we're also we were also teaching you know um, essay structure and presentation skills and uh, doing team building and, and leadership activities. So it's a very holistic package, um, and it, it is the kind of model that 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 uh, we use a lot at Professors Without Borders, um, where where it's not just about one thing; it's it's the whole experience. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I, I, I do want, I have a few more questions, but I also, of course, need to go back at one point to, uh, to what the company does and, and, and education. But I'm, I, I will ask one more question about you and uh, because it really interests me is uh, you, you have been in Asia before you mentioned. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, I think in the last few years, uh, you have been mm -hmm. around Africa, right? So Ivory Coast, um, you're currently still in Africa. What what uh, what triggers you to to work in Africa? And um, I guess what is the importance of it? Because I can see a huge importance, but I would love to hear that from you. And maybe you can do like a, a one minute why everyone in the world should at least work partly of their life in Africa and how beautiful the experience is. <laughs> well. Um... So I, I had the privilege uh, in my, my earlier years of, of traveling quite a bit in, in Europe and in, in Asia and living in Asia. And so when I was leaving London, um, I knew I wanted to have a different experience. And so, uh, and, and Africa was a great unknown to me. Um, we learned very little about it uh, in, in school and certainly in, in, in my day. Um, and there's a very particular set image that we, we, we see in the, the Western media. And uh, so I wanted to, to, I wanted to go and, and learn for myself and, and 
see, you know, a little bit, get a glimpse of what the truth is um, and see new things. I'm addicted to new things, um, new experiences. Uh, it's any, any location or culture or anything that, that's different, give it, give it to me. So, um, and I kind of jumped in with both feet because I went directly from the, the booming international metropolis of London to a small town in, uh, in, in Eastern Ivory Coast, but it was the best thing ever. Um, and uh, I learned, I, 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 you know, I, I really saw the, the, the dichotomy between the reality of the reality of Africa or the reality that I was experiencing in that particular place. Um, and, and, you know, what we kind of just assume uh, in the West. Um, I think it's, I think it's, it's fantastic in general to, 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 to visit and learn about different cultures in a very respectful manner, of course, and a very open-minded manner. Um, and I think it's very important for, for, for people to understand that Africa is not one homogenous continent. It's huge. Um, it is diverse and varied. Um, you know, before, before you come here, if you're relying on the knowledge that you learned in school, that the type of knowledge that I learned in school, you had no idea about the differences between or within countries. Um, and so it's, I, I think the value is, 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 is immense because this is, you know, this is a huge component of, 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 of the global population. Um, they, have, they are making important contributions to what's happening in the world. Um, and I'll, I'll, go, I'll be a little bit controversial and say that, you know, it's very easy to say, well, they're suffering from this problem or this problem or this problem, but we can't deny the influence that we've had on creating those. So um, I think it's a very enlightening experience if done respectfully. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, professors Without Borders, of course you are active in education. I'm active in education. I, th I think the last two years have been a major shift in how education is given, how it's uh, perceived and I guess, it's, it's the biggest shift in, in the last hundred years uh, because of the pandemic, because of the, all the technology possibilities right now. Um, I would love to hear from you what you see as the biggest shift, if you see a shift, because maybe I'm the only one who sees the shift, that's a possibility, and uh, how you think the pandemic, but we don't need to talk about the pandemic, but more the shift that brought that and how that is going to affect you as a teacher, uh, your company and organization, and um, also just education in itself. A lot of wow, different yeah. questions at once. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm you may have to remind. The... No, that's all right. That's okay. Uh, you uh, may have to remind me of one or two. Sure. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So I, I mean, hindsight can be twenty twenty sometimes, um, and if you looking back now, you know, it, it, it seems like we were starting to head in this direction anyways with these, these more high, well, definitely with the hybrid models um, for, if, you know, if you're looking for the sort of formal education, K-12 and, and university. Um, but it was, it, it was, it was small. It was just a, a grain of sand or a few grains of sand at that point. Um, and it was limited. Uh, we still had the luxury of, of holding face-to-face -face classes all the time if we wanted to. Um, and I think that I think that the, the pandemic just accelerated the change. I mean, exponentially accelerated. So I think it's possible that we were going to get to some place like this eventually, but we were forced to do it in the blink of an eye. Yeah. And um, I think before that tended to be generally for those who were more privileged, who had access to technology, who the hardware, software, uh, hardware um, connections, etc. cetera. Um, you know, we would, this forced us to re-examine uh, access to those things and how we can ensure that it is equitable. 
Um, and one of the things that we've seen is, is who's, being, who's being left behind? Who, who, who have we not considered? Um, uh, and, and why is that force, forcing us to examine why that is? Um, let me think, you were asking me about how that's influenced what we do at- uh, Yeah, yeah, Susan. yeah. I will just yeah. continue. You, ma you mentioned the okay. uh, hybrid, that you saw mm -hmm. that there was already a shift towards that. I, I've seen the same thing. Mm -hmm. I guess there's education to like, like universities. Uh, I think they are getting way more hybrid already. I think mm -hmm. there's also a huge shift in, in business uh, education. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But what, what I would be interested in is to see, because you mentioned in the end the connection part and uh, how accessible it is for everyone. I think that's a, a very interesting topic uh, because mm -hmm. in times like this where life uh, is not an option or it was not an option or it's getting back to life again, but there will be more stuff like this, in, in I guess, in the future. Um, what, where do you think this will be for the people that have less accessibility and how, how can we do something with that? That's, I mean, that's a huge question and, and it's, a, it's a very good question. And, and I, uh, you know, I think, that, I think and I hope that there are, you know, greater minds around the world that are, that are working on this. But, you know, we have one is, is um, you know, the internet connectivity uh, geographically. Um, if you are in a uh, if you're in a small village far from the capital city uh, in, in a, on virtually on any continent really this is not always about the the, the north south divide um, this happens in you know this can happen in Russia this can happen in America this can happen anywhere. Um, you know, the, 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 your geographic location within the country as well as on the, on the planet can really affect how, you know, how, how connected you can be. Um, and I know we're making, we're making great progress uh, and I just think that has to continue and we have to, you know, if, there's, if it's possible to do it faster, I don't know. It's not, a, it's not an industry I'm familiar with, but I know from my side what I would like to see. Um, I did an online program, I, in fact, the African Leadership University, again, I did their pre-sessional program last year, 100% online, uh, and I had students um, connecting in from uh, sort of some of the, the more far-flung areas of uh, Democratic Republic of Congo or, or um, uh, Cape Verde or uh, Zimbabwe, and so yeah, it, it's your accessibility often depends on your geographic location. Um, it depends on it's it, there's, there's a financial factor. <clears throat> Can you afford to buy your data packages um, to allow you to participate in online learning? Um, how do we structure the learning so that we minimize? Excuse me, that cost impact. On students, you know, we don't just say here download 15 gig of stuff and then you know upload large yeah large video journals or whatever that are mm -hmm. going to really eat up a data package. We have to be mindful of things like that. Um, and online, online time. Do they have the connective? Do they have the the uh, uh, the, sufficient, the sufficient quality to to be present for an entire one hour or ninety minute class um, without without too many interruptions, without too many drop-offs, um, where they can uh, participate meaningfully because they're, they're, they can maintain the thread of, of, of the class. So that's, there are a lot of challenges that way. Um, and it's gonna take, take a concerted effort with you know, telecoms uh, providers, with uh, education providers, with um, Mm, authorities, national and local authorities. Um, it's it's a it's a it's it's a group effort. I'm, I'm I'm going to use that that cliche that phrase has become cliche now. It takes a village. It takes a village to do everything now. And and do you expect that it goes back to where it was? That it goes back to slow mode, then people go back to classes. And, and hybrid will come, but it will just go in the same pace as it was before, which is kind of slow, right? I, I think education is not like the quickest 
uh, uh, niche out there or industry. Uh, do you expect that it goes back to slow mode and that they're just go back to education and classroom? Or do you think that people really take this opportunity and, and, and bring it like five years, 10 years, 20 years forward? Um, I think that the innovators in the sector will definitely do that. I think they're, they're this, uh, for some of us, this has been seen as an opportunity to, to re-examine you know, the traditional models, what we've been doing. And, and, you know, yes, it's been a challenge, but it's also been, it's also been an opportunity um, to, 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 affect, to affect significant changes, um, even if it's just within our own little corner, our little sphere. Um, but I think you have people, enough people doing that, that it, it's starting to create something. Uh, I also think it depends on the age level. Um, I'm not an expert in, in early years education, but my sense from talking to, to, to those with a lot more experience than me is that, you know, at that age, it, it can often be preferable to have that, those live face-to-face -face classes. Um, how do you engage a five-year-old uh, online? There are people yeah. that do it extremely well, but to do that on a huge scale um, is, would require would require a significant overhaul of, 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 of how we do and a lot of sh best practice sharing among people. And I think we're moving towards that. But again, with that, with that, uh, with those um, younger students, I think the challenges are probably greater. You haven't, they haven't yet developed that, that, that um, the, those skills of, of being self starters and of self, self motivation. Um, and they're, 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 the time, the capacity for being online is much, much shorter. You know, as, as you and I probably both know, you know, you do three, four, five hours of, of Zoom calls and, and your brain goes to mush at that point. And so, you know, to expect a, a child to have a full day of school on Zoom, as people, you know, know and have found out, it's just not possible. Yeah, yeah I guess for, for children... The, the biggest aspect is, of course, not really learning. It's more like what are mm -hmm. social skills, how to behave around people, yes. uh, you know. So, so I guess that will there. There's a big importance for life. Plus, the parents also mm -hmm. can't take care of them twenty four seven. Mm -hmm. I guess that's also a big one. <laughs> exactly. So you yes, they they still need that kind of supervision and that external motivation to 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 pay attention to the the, the Zoom class or to to do their activities. Or their homework or whatever it is that they're doing at home. Um, whereas once you get to something like the, the tertiary level where, where we are with professors without borders and even in high school, you know, the students have developed those, 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 those working skills already or they're, they're in the process of developing them. And, and so you can, this, these hybrid models now, you can actually leverage them to maximize your face-to-face -face time or your, uh, computer time, uh, your, 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 your live online sessions, you mm. know, by having, having that flipped classroom model where they're, they're doing some self-work in advance and then they, they bring questions and, 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 and ideas to the, the live session um, so that that is, that the value in that is, is augmented. Um, and so I, that's where I see the potential. Um, students, students, you have asynchronous learning where you can have the portion they do at their own pace in the time that suits them. And then you come together as a group and you, 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 you have the benefits of that as well. Cool. Yeah, yeah. One, one of the things I wrote down is that because you, you and, um, and, and your organization, you're very focused on soft skills, right? I think- yes. When, when me and my friends talk about our education, which is just a regular education, in, for me, it's in the Netherlands. Um, it's always about like certain topics that are already the same for the last 80 years. I guess sometimes something changes, but it's usually uh, physics goes uh, down. Nobody does that anymore. It's purely focused on a few few topics, which of course is, in, is important. But we, we often discuss the importance of uh, soft skills and that there's, I guess, a big lack of that in, in most education systems, but also uh, that you get um, education is still very broad, right? So you learn a little bit of everything 
And most people don't even know in what direction they want to go at, at a younger age. Uh, do you see, and this is, of course, I, I have an opinion about this, but uh, do you see that online education and technology is also changing that where people can, uh, th that it's way more focused on soft skills because you don't really know what direction you want to go. And when you start realizing what, what you want to do, that the, that the education uh, basically goes in that direction instead of the whole broad field, because we all have YouTube, we, also have, we all have Wikipedia nowadays, we can do a lot of generic information, we can absorb that ourselves. Do you see that online education also takes a big role there? And on what kind of term, if you see it, because maybe you don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wow. Um, so I would say, so first of all, I'm actually, because, so coming from the, I'm from Canada and coming from that system, which is similar to North America, um, right until the end of high school, we, we, we are, or at least when I was young, um, you know, you were, you were required to, to, to have a very, very broad open focus. Um, you're required to have, a, you know, in order to get your high school diploma, you're required to have X number of credits in mathematics, X number of credits in English language and literature, X number of credits in history, et cetera, et cetera, to ensure that, that, that you've covered that broad spectrum. And when you go to university, again, in my time, um, you, 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 you had some additional, uh, outside of your, your major, you had some additional uh, required credits. So for example, if you're a humanities student, you need at least one credit from uh, sciences or social sciences. One, if you're science, you need one from social or, or, or humanities. And you can change your major, you know, halfway through your degree. I actually like that because, you know, at, at, at 16, 17, 18, we're still developing as people. We're still learning who we are and we're still learning about the world. So. I think it's quite rare that, that, that young people will know exactly what they want to do. Um, uh, and, and, and also we're no longer in a, in a context where, you know, you move from high school, you go to university to study your subject and you have a career in that field for, for the rest of your life. We are, you know, they're, they're, the studies have shown uh, or have predicted that, that, you know, I think, um, Millennials will hold, I, I saw some figures the other day, um, uh, will hold something like 15 different jobs. And it wasn't even that, for, within their whole, it wasn't even within their whole lives. It was within like the first however many years of their, their working life. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think, first of all, exposure to a, to, to a very wide range of, of, of subjects and fields helps people get helps students get a taste of different things and, and identify oh that that's quite interesting to me i'd like to learn a bit more i'd like to explore history a bit more or mm, science that, that's kind of revving my engine let's let's you know let's look more at that um in a more low risk uh setting you know in high school there's nothing writing you you, you don't have five thousand or ten thousand or twenty thousand or more dollars mm, you know at stake there where if you don't, you know, you've paid for that course and, and you change and then the course become, isn't valid for your, your degree. Um, I, I think it's a great way to, 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 to work. Um, and I, but I think uh, to, to, to bring this back to the online question, um, how, does, how, does, how does the online help us? I think, I'm not sure if I really, what stands out to me most is the student choice, um, not necessarily the online component. There's the, we're starting to build more student choice into the curriculum and into, into uh, courses and lessons. And so that, you know, you and I could be taking the same history course on the Russian Revolution, for example, and you might be intrigued by, you know, the, the, how propaganda was used, for example. And you could then then you might be able to dig deeper into that yeah. and how you know that might take you and then that might spur an interest in politics or it might spur an interest in media right yeah. whereas I'm I might be taking the same course as you and I decide to to, to for my projects to 
to explore more about, you know, um, uh, how when they, they they overthrew the royal family, what was why you know what was the context for this? How how was royalty viewed in other countries in Europe at that time? Um, was it was this just a, a, a an issue in Russia, or was this happening elsewhere? And so I might go into I might also go into politics in a different direction, or I might I might go into the the more historical side. So I think that, but then you know, in order to do that leveraging the online learning uh, factor is, is, is very strong because, you know, if we're sitting in a classroom or at home and we have laptops or tablets, we're able to do that in a way that might have been more difficult if, if, if we had to go to the school library and rely on the books that had been selected and purchased. Yeah, or the teacher, that, that I guess, thing. right? Yeah, yeah. There's also a limitation in what a teacher can know, right? So they usually exactly. know the books. Yeah. <laughs> What 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 do you what do you like more, live or online? As a teacher, I love live. I love live. <laughs> for me, you know, I, and I, that's not to knock. I've had some wonderful experiences uh, online, both as a, as a uh, as a as an educator and as a learner. Uh, I do with my excuse me with my location being so remote out in the Indian Ocean. You know, I, I have to access my my professional development online. So I've seen it from both sides. But for me as an educator, there's nothing like being in the classroom. Um, you, it, you can remove, th th this is a physical barrier between you and I, and, and mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's more difficult to read the person. Um, and it takes a lot more uh, consideration to engage the person. Um, it's it, when you're in the classroom environment, you can move the chairs, you can move the desks, you can have students get up and down, you can, you know, do some physical things to, to, to explore learning. Um, you can, you can create moments of more, uh, I suppose, what, what you could call educational intimacy, where students feel like, feel that they're in a space where they can, you know, share thoughts and sure. ask questions. Yeah. Yeah, so I find, and that human connection, I mean, we're, we're hardwired to need human connection. Um, and so I think I love building that in my classes. But, you know, we're learning how to do a fair amount of that online, over Zoom, over Google Meets, everything. So, you know, I think, and who knows where technology is going to take us, really. We could, we could end up with, you know, these, 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 the three D glasses where we're sort of in a in a representation of a room, and it, and it's like being, you know, the way they play video games, and it's like being there with our with our our, our classmates and our classmates, students. And, yeah. I mean, how how interesting would that be? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, you can still. It would definitely not help the health, I guess, like worldwide, if everyone just stays at home with a glass with, with goggles on. But uh, <laughs> there are, of course, more things. I understand. It could be part of the hybrid model, where where uh, content heavy parts, for example. Yeah, I guess we will always feel the need to see people, right? Uh, e even if they can make it digitally super accurate. It's still different, right? We can yeah. we cannot have a drink together or a coffee or etc. Uh, so, for a professor without borders, what what is the because the world is shifting towards kind of a normal state again slowly, mm -hmm. right? It will take some more time. What what is going to be the focus for the for the next twelve months? Um, it, also in regards to online hybrid and live events, mm -hmm. and uh, how do you see that play out? Yeah, well, it's interesting. We are, we, uh, like the world, um, our organization is in a period of, of change and development. So what was initially for, for, for our first five years, were, were, it was the face-to-face -face model. It was the, you know, summer school model where we went in, into country at the invitation of host institutions and delivered face-to-face -face learning. Obviously, you know, last year, Absolutely not possible. This year, still not, still not really possible. Um, one response we had um, 
uh, our, our CEO, Dr. Caroline Varen, and um, uh, one, of, uh, one of our members, um, Dr. George Richards, had this wonderful idea of creating ProEvo Online. Mm. So it's, um, in fact, I, I, I like to, to uh, refer to it maybe perhaps a little bit irreverently as kind of an educational matchmaking service. We have um, uh, volunteer professors who are listed on the website with their areas of expertise. And any institution in the world can, can, can log on and uh, find um, a relevant uh, expert uh, in the field to who is willing to deliver a, a lecture. And so for example, if I'm, if I'm sitting here in Mauritius and uh, I'm teaching possibly criminal justice and I, uh, I, I want, um, you know, I want a fresh voice, I want a, a, a different perspective, I want um, maybe somebody who has a particular area of specialty within the, within the field, I can go on there and, oh, Dr. George Richards, he is, Right, that's exactly what I need. And the, 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 the online uh, service will connect me with him. We can organize uh, you know, the lecture for what I'm looking for. And then uh, we, have, we, have a, uh, we have a session where he's linked into my classroom. He, he delivers the, the, the lecture or the lesson. Um, and, and it's free of charge. It's free of charge for the user and it's per, purely voluntary on the, on the, the part of the speaker. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think this is really, this, is, this has two kind of, two, it's relevant in two ways. First of all, you know, um, obviously travel is, is extremely difficult right now, um, even, if a, even if an organization had the budget to bring someone in. Um, but of course, on the other hand, there are so many institutions out there that don't have that budget to fly in an expert for a few days or a few weeks. Uh, and so we're, you know, we're, we're, we're enabling them to, to tap into that um, global network of, of, of experts and educators, uh, which is just kind of, it, it just helps to expand. And, and, and you know, if I'm, if I'm sitting perhaps in Colombia um, and I get an expert who's in, you know, maybe in Malaysia, you know, I'm, I'm guaranteed to get a fresh perspective on, on, on the question or on the topic. So I think that that, that benefit is, is, is huge. You know, we're a global community already and, and to be able to, to, to tap into that and, and to have a, have a, a consider other viewpoints and, and other experiences um, benefits students enormously. Yeah, I guess yeah, it's, it, we didn't talk about it yet, but you just mentioned it, budget. I think that, mm -hmm. that is potentially going to be the biggest change because every company, like even us, and we, we are a small company, right? But we are now very much, uh, like we were already way more digital, but everyone now has an opportunity to educate themselves, right? And also mm -hmm. a lot of employers and uh, and organizations have now the chance to really educate their teams and their and the, and the people uh, around their organization because of the budgets, right? So mm -hmm. it's now, because it's so much more accessible, uh, also because of organizations like you, uh, you will see that a lot of people will, will, will be focusing way more on education because the budget is not really a topic anymore. Right. Uh, so that could be a very interesting uh, uh, shift. And you're you're absolutely right. I mean, it does it does bring costs down if you're able to connect virtually rather than being obliged to fly someone in, put them up in a hotel, um, you know, pay a per diem, whatever, whatever. Uh, it, so there there is there is a bit of democratization there. Um, again, based on the access that you have. Mm. Yes, uh, yeah. that, that that will probably just come back. I guess there, there, are, there are some smart people around the world working on this mm -hmm. pro, uh, problem, right? Yeah. With, uh, yeah. with, uh, with the Zeppelins that, that, that is going to connect the whole world to internet. I think mm -hmm. Facebook is working on it. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon is working on it, I believe, to, 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 yeah. to make that happen. So yeah, that's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I have one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, where can people find your organization? Where can people find you? 
And uh, what kind of people, of course, you are interested maybe to talk with a lot of different people, but what kind of yeah. organizations will be interesting for you as well to, to talk with? Well, I'm an information junkie, right? I just, I lap it up here and there. So I'm, my, my range of interest is huge and diverse. And I'm always interested in learning, you know, from uh, discussing and with and learning from people who perhaps, you know, those whose connection with the work I do is obvious, um, but also with those who, with whom it's not, because, you know, you, 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 you can find commonalities and overlap, uh, or maybe they're bringing something, maybe they'll give you some fresh perspectives or, or ideas that you think, oh my gosh, I never thought that, you know, that's something that I can consider in the work I do. Um, so really anybody is, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't even put a, I, I can't even put a fence around, around um, uh, anything in particular. Obviously educators, uh, anyone involved in any way in the educational sphere, uh, I'm a big taker. I, I love uh, I love exchanging ideas, um, so that's always that's probably the the, the primary one. Uh, Professors Without Borders. We, uh, our main website is www.prowebo.org. Prowebo, P R O W I B O, um, and then our uh, online uh, our our. Um, uh, Prowebo Online, which is the, the database of, of professors that I was discussing earlier. Um, it's at uh, online.prowebo.org, I believe. So uh, all of that is there. Um, and, you know, we welcome uh, connections and, and questions and conversations with, with everybody. Um, if they're interested in volunteering, if they're interested in being, a, a, you know, hosting, hosting a program. The, you asked me earlier about, you know, what's our vision for the next, the next 12 months, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we are definitely uh, building hybrid models. Uh, we've done a lot of online things this past year, online conferences, online workshops uh, to serve the communities that, that, that we're connected with, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but going forward in, in terms of running these so-called, what used to be summer schools, but now of course calendars have shifted. Yeah, we're definitely looking at hybrid models, uh, that kind of flipped classroom idea, um, workshops online, and then where, wherever possible, we have our in-face, uh, our in-person sessions again. Uh, so anybody who's interested in, in those in any way, please feel free to contact us. Awesome. I guess uh, the website, I will link to the website as well. Uh, uh, link, LinkedIn could be. Yes, I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rachel Warnick, educator, uh, and uh, Professors Without Borders is also, we're on, Professors Without Borders is on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Okay. I will make sure to link all of these. <laughs> I thank guess you. that will be helpful. Yes. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. I think it was very insightful. You do a lot of different things and a lot of interesting uh, stories. So it is quite hard to, or hard it's a conversation but uh yeah it, it's it, i would love to talk for 15 hours about africa i would love to talk about education worldwide connectivity of course but we ha we have to pick our battles i guess uh okay. but it was it was very interesting and uh who knows in the future we can do a, a more specific session for example about education in africa or uh the organization or uh the we, we are online, so we can do that. <laughs> I'd be delighted. Um, I, uh, as an aside, I also am the president and co-founder of, of the, the, the NGO here that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a project in the pipeline that uh, is also a hybrid model um, that we're going to be rolling out with uh, younger students uh, who, are, who have been marginalized. Uh, so perhaps sometime that, that might be of interest to you as well. Definitely, definitely. Okay, awesome. Um, I, will, I will get in touch on that after, after this uh, video. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, My pleasure. And I will, uh, I will uh, when, when everything is live, I will make sure you receive it as well. And uh, we take okay. it from there. Okay. Thank you.